Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jordan. It's the moment y'all all been waiting for. We are back with another episode of TGIF with two of the most fabulous men in the world, Al Reynolds and Q, aka Funky Dineva. They are both here to join me to spill the tea and break down all of the biggest headlines and I'll talk about some hot topics and you know what, a little politics and a little personal business at the end. Now sit back and relax and grab your drink because it's time to get it popping. All right, please welcome multimedia personality and talk show host and uh, fitness guru, got the arms out tonight, Bunky mm-hmm. Dineva. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, Dang, you look like a clothesline. <laughs> <laughs> and brand strategist who's sipping on that gin tonight, so we don't know what's going to come into it, I mean, go out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. Al Reynolds, I did not mean to say that. Mm-hmm. Al Reynolds. Yeah, you better watch it. I, we already started earlier. What's up, Eric? What's up, Claudia? What's up, mm-hmm. Q? What's going on, Al? I see them arms, though. You looking good, bro. No, I'm, I'm, I'm paying enough money a month for it, you know. Right. <clears throat> I just figured I just get a, I just figured I'd get the girls a little preview, <laughs> a little preview of the spring summer collection, aka okay. my body, okay. my body that's coming. Just just a little sample. Just a little sample. Okay, so wait a minute. Did the, did the shirt come with out the sleeves or did you cut them out? Like what's up with the shirt? Oh no, it came like this. See now, now that I got this new body, I only slop, shop sleeveless. <laughs> oh my god! So, so Al, 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 been having a nice body. Al is in such good shape. So Al, now that he's you know getting you know trying to get towards uh, where you at, uh-huh. he gonna start dressing like a little thought is what he's telling us. <laughs> oh, okay. Go ahead. Let me tell you, there's nothing. Nothing feels better than feeling good about your body. So look, show more of it. The more and better you feel. I'm all for it. What would you give uh, Q's body uh, on a scale of one to ten right now, Al? You're the fitness guru here. You're the in the best shape. Um, well, this is, I mean, fitness is a different score, but just regular body, I give him an eight, oh. eight and a half. Oh, I think it. I have to, they don't call me Slim Goody for nothing. I think it. <laughs> Q, what would you give Al's body? I would what? give Al a perfect ten. Ah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Thank you, Q. You're welcome, bro. I didn't even have the cash happen for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Q, have you gotten any uh, feedback from uh, ever since last week when we had you in the hot seat and you was actually very transparent? People were mad about the buzzer. They were like, I'm sick of that damn buzzer. We want to hear that, You know what? That that was the biggest thing that I got. But no, a lot of people got in my DMs and a lot of people were retweeting and they were like, oh my God, I liked it. And you you were so honest. And Funky Dineva always say, never let a bitch spray you with their own tea. The people really did love the segment. So now I'm just hoping that you guys can meet me where I was at. Because, uh, you know, I'm an Uh-oh. open book. Uh-oh, we're going to see. We're going to see. I hope it's not me tonight. I have even read forward to see whose turn it is. So we'll all find out at the same time. And you know what? And you never know. It could be Q again. It could be. It's totally random. It's a draw. And we don't know who it's going to be for week to week. <laughs> So what's everybody, you said you sipping on some gin. Funky, what you drinking on? I'm doing um, vodka with a splash of Malibu, y'all. And Publix got this strawberry lemonade that's on limited time or whatever. We did that and last week. Q. Yeah, yeah, but it, well, it's still on limited time. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's still 99 cents. Okay, Q. Oh, my God. I'm drinking some, uh, I guess it's pina colada, Malibu rum that KJ put together, and uh, we'll see what, what else is in it. I know he want me to be drunk on Friday nights. I think you need to clone KJ. Damn, that man does everything for you. You I know what? You, that's a good man. You always see people complaining about their man, like, ain't no good man. That is bullshit. I have a really, really, really good guy. And I think when, as much as people want to be heard and invent when someone's a bad guy or when they mess up, they should keep that same energy when they're a good guy. We've been together a couple of years now, two and some change. And he is, he's been, he's been great. We've never had a fight. Uh, he get on my nerves sometimes, I get on his nerves, but we just be quiet for a couple of days and be passive aggressive. And then we're cool on day three. And like, we just, it's, he's a good guy. He's very supportive okay. and he don't get jealous. He ain't trying to do none of this media shit. He don't care. I love it. If it works, it works. He's a good man, Savannah. A- don't run that man away. I won't. What you? Al, I am a catch myself, you know. I didn't say you weren't. I'm just saying, don't run the good man away, baby. Okay, let's go. Let's get started. Okay, house. Let's get into some hot topics. <laughs> All right, Q. Um, oh no, we already did that. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> you recently hey, posted well, this. Uh, no, we got something first. Uh, Q, you you posted the following message on social media. 
Oh, we have to get into this. Okay. At 37, that? I'm still uncomfortable buying condoms. Tell us why you're so uncomfortable buying condoms at 37. Wait a so, minute, what happened? He posted on social media that he's still uncomfortable buying condoms. He's 37, but he, he feels like he gets judged, yeah. right? So look, there's so much anxiety that goes into condoms, right? Buying condoms. So first and foremost, they've got a 30, 30 selection. They got everything from small to gigantic. Then there's flavors, there's colors, there's uh oh, there's the people all in town. Oh, hold on. They got flavors, they got colors, they got lubricated, not lubricated, they got the three pack, the eight pack, the 30 pack. You know what I'm saying? So then when you put this in your basket. People are looking at you. They judging you. You get to the register. You got to get a lady your milk, your eggs, your 80 pack of condoms. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, no matter what you, based on what you buy, it's how you get judged. If you buy an 80 pack, you a hoe. If you buy the gray pack, you little. If you buy the magnums, you lying. If you buy the ribbed and the flavored, you's a freak. It's just so much that goes into it. But I'm glad I posted it because... My people told me to get them off of Amazon and I don't even have to worry about that. And I never thought about that. Wow. That is, that's, that's how you got to do it. Like, you know what? That's where you got to get your lube. If you use lube, um, you got to get your, your, I mean, if you're into that, um, um, you know, all those other things that are online on Amazon, you should just get them there instead of going to the store and embarrassing yourself. Not that it's I just very personal and it doesn't help it that most times when I have to purchase them, it's like after midnight while I'm en route to go be grown. So you just, I just look like I'm doing something that, that's not for the glory of the kingdom. You know what I hate? When you got to go buy sex things or embarrassing things and you go to the cashier and it's somebody black. Because you know, only because of this, nine times out of ten, they it might exactly know who you are. Right. Exactly and right. I'm like, damn it, I got to go to, I, I, this, this ain't being racist. But I need to go to anybody but the sister at the restaurant because I don't want her to like gossip about my shit. You know what makes me the most uncomfortable? Older women. Because they judging you, right? Yeah, it just makes me feel like, sorry, Miss Margaret. I know I'm not supposed to be but bad. See, let me tell you what I do, Claudia. I go to the pharmacy and check out when I got some embarrassing shit. Because yes. they deal with everything. They deal with your guts falling out your ass. They deal with all <laughs> types of stuff. So to see a, a little condom on there, it's fine. They don't, you know, they'd be like, oh, okay. So this is quite normal. They treat all types of stuff at the pharmacy. So if there's a little trick, go to the pharmacy. If you're in doubt, go to the pharmacy and check That's out. That's true. That is a good idea. And people don't really think about that. Like when you become a little bit recognizable. I remember one time I had to go to uh, get my little annual checkup. Feet were in stirrups and the doctor looked Indian, right? He was super dark with that like dark black hair. And I was like, okay, he, he don't know who I am. You know what I mean? Anyways, he waits till the feet are up in the stirrups. So we're almost wrapping it up to tell me, I know who you are. Oh, damn. Me and my wife. Well, I was like, no, it was so uncomfortable. Yeah. I was like, I thought you was from in New Delhi, not New Jersey. <laughs> you are wrong. You are wrong That's for that. Funny, but I'm true. like, I'm so. It's so true, though. It's so. I true. was like, I'm so glad I don't have nothing. I was just coming for my annual. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's get into this uh, breaking news, or uh, more so, break up news. Jennifer Lopez and her boyfriend A Rod broken up. I didn't see this coming. The couple been engaged since 2019. Jennifer has uh, previously announced that they postponed the wedding twice, saying, you know, the, the quarantine and COVID was the reason. Did, did y'all see this coming or is a long engagement, is that a bad sign usually when it's a long engagement? So I didn't see it coming at all. And, and I'm actually hurt by this, right? Like, rarely do I care and get involved in celebrity stuff, especially considering what I do for a living. But I told y'all, I've seen him, her, A-Rod and the children and Steve Mackey couple weeks ago at Merrick Park in Coral, in, uh, Coral Gables, Coconut Grove area, or whatever the case may be. They were just special to me. I like J-Lo a lot. I really like A-Rod. There's just something about his energy that gives off, he's a good man, Savannah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she needs a good man. So this hurts me to know that they're breaking up. Um, Listen, we're in 2021 now. We're not in, in, in 1950s with grandma and grandpa where he met her one week at church, the next week he was going off to the military and said, will you marry me? I think the longer the engagement before you merge social security numbers with somebody, the better. Because the first three years, you only meet their representative anyway. 
Um, it takes it takes that, th that that third fourth year of death in the family, a check bouncing, your credit going back. You got to go through some things for you really figure out somebody's character. And maybe that's what's going on with these two. One of them don't went through some things and don't figure out that the other's not the right one. Well, there was reports, and Al, I don't know if you've seen this, but supposedly there's a reality star that uh, this this blonde chick that supposedly a -Rod was seen with and allegations that he may have been fooling I around? I'm going to tell you this. I don't think that that's what it is. I think what the real issue here is that is that A-Rod is faced with embezzlement, rocketeering, and civil suit. He's got 59 counts against him filed by his ex-wife's brother. Now, one thing that we know about J-Lo is that she doesn't want any bad PR around her and her brand. And unfortunately, with the fact that he's charged with embezzlement that has lasted over 20 years, not to mention, remember, he admitted to use of performance enhanced drugs. This is something that she can't escape. She can't PR out of. And it doesn't look good for her. And unfortunately, she is that girl. She still wants to be in the limelight. She's still very focused about her PR. This doesn't feel right to her. And so there are a number of things that just aren't in making her feel comfortable and I think and that's why she's pulling the plug on top of the fact that you got to remember A-Rod has made his millions for a long long time in sports and he's ready to sit down and play with his kids and enjoy his kids life as she says she enjoys the life of being on 150 every day he's not into that anymore and okay. as you know Claudia I went to J I went to J-Lo and Mark Anthony's wedding I was there at that wedding and Aunt Mark Anthony was just like A-Rod he was very much a family guy. He was very much like when he wasn't on stage, he wanted his intimate space to be quiet and simple. That's not who J-Lo is. Okay with the, the facts. I didn't know about that embezzlement I stuff, know but you know what? One thing about J-Lo, and this is why she's my spirit animal in this regard, she is not ride or die when it comes to crime and neither am I. I'm sorry, you young girls can have it. I'm not pen palling it with nobody in the pen. I will be friends with you, but I'm not waiting on you because I don't know what the hell you doing up in there. You, well, you, I don't you got your eight years. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying I, 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 I'm not ride or die like that. And, and that's something you got to think about when you're in a relationship with someone high profile. Like anything KJ does is affecting me, right? It's affecting, right. It's affecting a lot of our stuff. I, are you ride or die? Are y'all ride or die? Do crimes? I don't know. You probably, I probably will be a ride or die. But I mean, you've got to understand this isn't her first marriage. This isn't her first engagement. She has a long list of men, successful men that she's been able to be engaged with and be married to that just don't <laughs> last. So I think this has something to do more than with embezzlement or something going wrong. I feel like it, it could be something that she's struggling with that maybe as she mentioned, doing therapy was very helpful. She probably should explore it a little bit more. Hugh, what do you think? I don't know, it's just, I just couldn't see, especially at her age, you falling in love with somebody, then these charges come down that all of a sudden you just, you're not in love. Off, you just flip your heart off like a light switch. Like in that situation, I can completely understand, okay, we're not going to legally get married and merge social security numbers because they're not going to come get my goddamn money. Right. Okay. But I still love you. I still yearn for you at night. I still want you to hold me and kiss me and love me and protect me. So I feel like, Al, I don't know, it might be bigger than these charges, although that might be a factor. It, it, J-Lo also strikes me as a type with her dating history that she gets bored. You know what I'm saying? And maybe, <laughs> maybe it's just as simple. I just simple. think, yeah, she, uh, she just conveniently got bored when these charges came along. I think we know what this is, and we just don't want to say it. I think that she is a woman that protects her brand at all costs in front of love, in, in front of, like, you know, whatever. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. Do, do you not think her brand could withstand any bad press that he's going to get? I think I, she, her brand could definitely, but she has to mentally withstand it. And I think that's the issue. I think that's been the issue with a number of her different marriages is that when the heat or when something, there's a bump in the road, she says, oh, okay, this is a falter and a falter is one that she's not interested in participating in. And she exits stage left. And it also could be a combination of the rumors that we've heard that are out there about this other woman, plus the embezzlement, plus the long engagement. It could I be a combination think, of I things. I don't think she's not used to men cheating on her. 
<laughs> Look at the history of the guys that she has dated. She's used to men cheating on her. In fact, she is expecting it because of the industry she's in and the people that she's with. I don't think this has anything to do with a cheating woman. You think that JLo is 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 okay with men cheating on her? I think at that level, she's probably like, how are you going to cheat on me? I think I agree with Claudia. I think at this level, JLo, JLo's, the Beyonce's of the world, the Rihanna's, they're the prize. Ain't no man cheating on JLo. What? You ain't they cheating shouldn't. on JLo. They okay. couldn't. Look, at the end of the day, it's a, a, a man is still a sexual human being, and he look at all the statistics and all the data as it relates to sex. Hey, you, for you to believe that that man is not going to cheat on that woman just because of who they are in the media, you are all delusional. No, I think no. Don't get it twisted. I think successful, beautiful women get cheated on all the time. Yeah. I just think he's crazy if he did because okay. I just thought they were the he's ultimate. And he's human. I just thought they were the ultimate Latin power couple. And I figured that they both reveled in that, honored that, knew what they represented for their culture, for entertainment and sports. And I really just wanted this to work. And I'm still- I know, but you thought the same thing with Mark Anthony, didn't you? Because you were like, oh my God, two music people. No, he wasn't cute. I didn't think that. I didn't think think that about her and Jimmy Cricket. I didn't think that about her. Yeah, I I, I wasn't feeling that. I was like, damn, J-Lo, you got- no. I didn't feel it at all. Oh man, I love Mark Anthony. I mean, his energy, he's, oh God, he's an incredible guy. He's talented. That's Jada, that's Jada Pinkett, man. Mm-mm. Well, we are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I cannot wait to hear your thoughts about Stacey Dash trying to get that black heart back that she traded in for them three white husbands she met on One Night Stands. We'll be right back, allegedly, with more TGIF when we return. Welcome back to TGIF, your new favorite show uh, in all the land. I'm here with Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva. Now, before we went to break, I mentioned that Stacey Dash is now in the running. Well, she's trying to get that black car back, y'all. They always come back home. Hey, OJ. Okay, so uh, she wants to get her black car back. A recent interview with uh, the Daily Mail, she mentioned that she regrets supporting Donald Trump and is backing off her conservative views. Let's take a look of Trump, you know, has put me in some kind of box. And, well, I, he's not the president. (laughs) So I'm going to give the president that we have right now a chance. (laughs) As you, okay, uh, as you may remember, I I don't know if y'all seen this, but the uh, former Fresh Prince of Bel-Air actress, Janet Huber, called out uh, Stacey Dash five years ago, saying that Stacey, just wanted sensationalism and was working for Fox because she needed a check. Let's take a look at this and then we about to go in. And she's making a check and she's bringing controversy to herself. Stacey is a bit of a media hoe. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, who wants to go first? I got this. Let me tell you something, Stacey. <laughs> Stacey people, Stacey people. We are not here for Stacey. Work ain't honest and it's obviously not paying is obviously not paying the bills. The only thing going on with Stacy right now is her bills backed up, her credit bad, and she don't ran through every old white man in Hollywood and don't nobody woke her ass. So now, like they all do, they want to run back to the community because black people, we are so forgiven. But the one thing that Stacy forgot is that black people are forgiven to everybody except other black people. We don't want you, okay? You sold us up the river for them white folks. You sat your raggedy, dusty, washed up 80s actress ass on them people couch every day. You told all our business. You used every negative stereotype against us. You spoke down on the BET and the NAACP, both organizations by which your dusty ass benefited from. Like Janet Huber said in the extended version of that clip, your ass don't appear on BET more than any other black actress in the damn business. You're the type of Negro that you just want to get ahead. Then once you get through the door, you want to close it for everybody else so they can't get in. But here's what you're going to have to do before I consider even reaching down in my file cabinet to hand your ass an application. You're going to have to volunteer to be the usher at first service, second service, third service, and past the revival. As soon as you put the <laughs> ushering, you will have to carry your ass down to the hospitality committee, and you will have to scoop baked beans and potato salad. Your ass will have to be at the SS Festival, picking up bags for Frankie Beverly and Mays, 
then your ass gonna have to be in all the uh, 50 Cent next music videos, Kanye West music videos. After that, baby, I need you to do the electric slide. I need you to learn the cha-cha slide. I need you to learn the tootsie roll. I need you to learn to come on, ride this train. After you finish doing that, baby, I need you to learn how to do an old nasty French roll, baby. Yes, God, I'm talking about weave, bundles, inches. I need you to know how to do that. I need you to know how to do braids. I need you to learn I Want to Be Down by Brandy, the first version <laughs> and the remix with Queen Latifah. And after you do all of that, I'm going to hand you an application, but I'm here to let you know, bitch, we still going to deny it. We don't, don't want this, you, bitch. I don't think don't want you. I don't think there's nothing else to be said about that, except for you know she's famous for being in that show Clueless. You want to know why? Because she is clueless. Bitch, she, you better figure out a way to divide them $1,400 that they're giving away for stimulus across the rest of your damn life because we ain't got nothing for you. And I know that we live in the protect black women, protect black women, honor the black woman, right. but we don't want you. Right. Matter of fact, I'm willing to make a trade. We'll take racial dollars, y'all. We're going to give her your spot on the line. We're going to give racial, racial people Racial people, have Rachel email me. We got a slot open for her in the black delegation. Oh, and we're Rachel Stacey Dash. You are off the chain tonight. Yeah. Now, Claudia, remember though, remember the reason why he is so disdain. Remember, she she wanted Black History Month in the United States to be done with. Yeah. So I completely 100 percent agree with Funky Dunneva on this. I don't know what's wrong with this woman. Like she her She's entire strong. beginning, her whole like she owes her entire career to the black community. Right. And, and, and I don't know why she has so, so much disdain for us. She was one of our semi-precious jewels. Like she right. was up there with uh, Naomi Campbell, Iman. She was an 80s, 90s symbol that we held her high. She was the pretty girl that was in that movie with Richard Pryor and Mo Money. She was one of us and we loved her and you traded us up the river, Stacey, and got nothing for it. Them white folks used you and abused you. And when they was done with you, they set your ass out on the curb just like garbage. And now you're broke, your bills backed up, and you want to come back and beg. Like I said earlier, your ass better find a way to divide them $1,400 that <laughs> across the rest of your damn life. In the, words, in the words of Smokey Mama from Friday, make it enough. <laughs> <laughs> You know, she's in the same category as the Candace Owens and the Amorosa yes. of the world. And you can stay over there with them. We good over here. So moving on. Well, one, more, one more thing. Here's what uh -oh. she what? said that she was angry, that at that time she was angry. But angry at who is what I'm trying to understand. Because we didn't do nothing to you. We made you. So who were you angry with? See, that's we why I that's why I think she could be she should be totally dismissed because what she ran to was what the narrative is around black women. And she tried to find solace in that. No, baby, you you weren't an angry black woman because we don't even claim you as a black woman with how you have treated our community. It is not going to be allowed. Goodbye. And, I find it, and before we go on and move on, I find it really funny that when you know, Trump was in office and they, they were very comfortable knowing that they were going to be backed up for four years, they probably thought eight that they could just go as hard as they could. And there was a whole crop of Negroes popping up. And I'm sorry if you get mad about me using that word. I really don't give a damn. That thought, let me just hop on over here and, and curdle, cuddle up to Massa and, and, and speak negatively on the black community. And guess what? That's a very profitable thing to do these days. If right. you're a black person that wants to separate yourselves from the other liberal voices and you want to check, speak against negative, speak negatively against black people and you will get scooped up by a Fox News in a second. And the list goes on and on and on and on. A, a conservative outlet will pick you up, OAN and, and all those other news outlets that are all the way right. They like nothing more than a black person willing to speak on camera negatively about us and be the Tim Scott of their network. And guess what? When it's over and they don't need your ass anymore, you will be fired and you will be a N-word like the rest of our liberal asses. So Stacey, we put you so, but you know what Stacey Dash? We are gonna invite you publicly because you are on this apology tour. I would love, if you think you can stand the pressure to come on TGIF, I would welcome you to come on this show and plead your case. And maybe we let the viewers decide if we invite you to the cookout. So that's oh, my official invitation to Stacey Dash. I'm with it. I'm with in it. addition to that, 
what we will do is we'll, we will provide her a safe haven where we will not give our opinion. She yeah, had, yes, we will. We will allow her to express okay. herself. I'm going to call out that day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we, I got no more sick days, Q. <laughs> I think... Uh, Okay, Keisha says, so Al ain't Stacy's friend? They act the same. Ooh, Keisha, Ooh. coming for Al. Keisha from where? Keisha from YouTube. Clearly, she don't know me. So Keisha, who from where? Don't hide behind your URL, sweetheart. Keisha from who and from where? Moving on. Okay. Um, so, yep. Holler at him in his inbox as Al yeah, yeah. is with the shit. Yeah, yeah. Move, move on along. <laughs> I know that y'all are just like me. You've got to be tired of people hiding behind these URLs. They got a whole lot to say, and they don't even know who you are. Mm, tell them, Al. Listen, welcome to my life. Right. I, I get dragged. I say something nice about someone, and they'll find one word and be like, you're being me. Get a podcast, Keisha, and then put your opinion on that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> So it's been almost a week since uh, the Oprah Winfrey uh, bombshell interview with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry went out. Meghan accused the royals of racist behavior. But yesterday, Prince William released a statement that read the royals are very much not a racist family. Also, the British talk show host, Piers Morgan, stormed out the uh, Good Morning Britain show and uh, then quit. Well, I heard he was fired. That's what really happened. And Meghan also filed a complaint against the network. Are the Brits in denial about racism and white privilege? Or the, I see a lot of Black Brits really calling it out. Al, I know you had a, a relationship with Meghan Markle and you had some things to say about Meghan. What, what say you, Al? So I am torn. Okay, first of all, remember, the British Empire has been around a very long time. So for you to think that there is not racism, that race doesn't play a part, is almost being naive. And you're not a naive woman, you're a smart woman. So like I said last week, I think what we're seeing here is someone who thought, and this is just my opinion, and you can beat me up if you want to. She thought that it was gonna be different for her. And what she met at the Buckingham Palace gate was the fact that she is in the eyes of everyone in their royal family, still a young black female, period. So what comes after that is all of the years of what that means to them. And we're seeing it unfold right now. I do say this though, I am enjoying how incredibly supportive Harry has been in this whole situation to his wife because he understands her power, her influence and her ability to affect change. And I think that the call here is that this example is forcing change in the royal family. And I can't wait to see how it unfolds. Oh, you, that ain't what you really wanted to say, Al. No, it's not, but I'm gonna hold it right here. Why? No, no, we keep the, <laughs> people wait, Al, people wait all week to hear, uh, Q, really to hear Q go on rants, right? <laughs> for me to instigate between y'all and try to get y'all together. Right. And for you to say something that goes against the grain, but there is some, you know, an intellect in that. People right. wait all week for that. So please, if you want to redo that, no, I don't, I don't want to redo any of it because I feel like the other side of her and who she used to be is where she is now and her being checked for that falsehood that she presented before. And what I think the best, the best part of that is what she's being forced to change in the royal family. So my experience in the past has been with Megan is that I didn't, I didn't find her to be in Hollywood a black female actress. That's just my opinion. I don't think I could name at least, you know, I, me personally, and I'm just saying, as I said, this is my opinion. I don't remember her having a lot of black friends. I don't remember her having a lot of black relationships, a lot of relationships with the black networks, a lot of relationships with the black producers, the black directors and the black writers. That to me shows your character as it relates to your interest in the black community. That's just my opinion, right? I uh, you so, know what, Al? I, I worked with her on Deal or No Deal, and it's been really hard for me because I've been asked by, I've been on Inside Edition this weekend, TMZ, right. defending her. And I'm also torn too because as a fellow Black woman, I don't care if you biracial or all the way 100, right? right? I still feel like I gotta, I feel a need to protect. 
and to I do, know, and that's that's probably that's probably my silence. Yeah. yeah like when 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 I was on Deal and Odell, I was like the mother hand on that show. I was one of the older models on the show and being a sister, very outspoken. I was telling those girls how to like re- renegotiate and all those kinds of things. And I remember every time we got a new black model, I would always extend myself and be like, What's up, sis? and try to give her the lay of the land. We never really bonded like that. We never got close. So all these, when I do these interviews and they say, oh, we bonded or we're close. I, I'm not lying trying to say that we were close. We weren't close. But I, I don't know to her. I didn't know her to be like super pro-black or anything like that. But with that being said, it's still wrong. It's still wrong how, you know, they are doing her and doing her baby and taking away the birth well, of that baby. So you're right. You're right. That's why I said the good side of this is what she's forced to realize right now and how she's responding to it right now and how, because of how she's responding to right now can probably change the direction of a country that has influenced the world for many, many years. So I I, I definitely understand the point of it and taking stock in it. But as you know, Claudia, it's very hard to support someone who you have seen on the other side. I got one question. How the hell they end up at Tyler Perry house? Neither one of them had no money on their card. <laughs> well, we, we, we gotta take a break, Al. We gotta take a quick break. Oh, damn. Uh, when we come back, yeah, we gotta come back because we, we we went over a little bit. But um, mm-hmm. someone said on YouTube, uh, what they say? They B says Al speaking the truth. So that's great. We have a we gonna take a quick break, and we'll be back with more um, TJF when we return. Yeah. Welcome back to TGIF. Oh, before we went to break, you were talking about the whole Meghan Markle situation and Al was being very politically correct. We're going to let Q, I want to hear what Q has to say and then I want Al to give us what he really thinks because that was his, 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 his just... politically correct pageant answer. Q, what do you think about this whole situation? I mean, I think it's unfortunate. I think that it, that, that it did make my brain, it did bend my brain in a lot of different directions because while I know that Black people are not a monolith and that we ex- we exist a, a, amongst a spectrum of experiences and skin color, she was trying to get us to feel some type of sympathy because she experienced uh-huh. racism as a Black woman. But what I saw was Oprah sitting down talking to a white lady. Um uh-huh. You know, that that's that's what I felt. And I know that may be ignorant because, again, not every black person eat collard greens, drink Kool-Aid <laughs> and bump Snoop Dogg. I understand. Yeah, at least had to try it. You know, but what I saw was Oprah Winfrey sitting there talking to a white woman complaining about how she was treated differently because she was black. Speaking of people who we can't tell whose race they are and um, white going to black and black going to white, Khloe Kardashian was pretty active on social media. But this week, her fans had her wondering if she had some work done. I don't know if y'all noticed uh, if there was anything different about her uh, face. Let's take a look at Khloe Kardashian. I love every single one of these products, and I'm so excited for you guys to get your hands on it. You guys are going to just love it. So what happened was she went to the who lady, (laughs) and the who lady is a seer and a medium and brought Michael Jackson through <laughs> through her and he stayed in her too long. He was only supposed to <laughs> stay for 60 seconds before the spiritual world and the universe collapsed <laughs> and had to call Harry Potter to fix this shit. And Chloe being the privileged white woman she is, she didn't want it. The lady said 60 seconds, she didn't want to let her go. Michael Jackson stayed in that oven too long, and bitch, now she's overdone. So now she done went from Khloe Kardashian to Miss Damn Piggy. Good, good, good thing Jim Henson Muppet still exists. She can have really? a, another run over there since they don't uh, kick off kicking it with the Kardashians. She can, she got children's now. She can go over there being the live action version of, of Muppets on Ice or Off Broadway or the, whatever the hell she want to do with that snout. Not a snout. <laughs> that clearly is not a stout. That is not a stout. <laughs> a stout. Al, what do you think about this? Does she have any work done? <clears throat> you know what? Chloe and the Kardashians have, I do what the f- I want to do money. So if they don't like their nose on Monday, they change it on Tuesday. If they don't like their ass on Wednesday, they change it on Thursday. If they want new breasts on Friday, they do it on Saturday. Listen, to them, it's just a matter of what you can afford. So to me, Chloe, 
enjoy your life. You got the money, do what you want to do. It's obvious she don't like that Tuesday nose because mama turned them comments <laughs> off. They was eating her ass alive, okay? They was eating the OJ daughter alive. And first it looked of like all, first of all, Q, first of all. It looked like something eat her nose alive. <laughs> like she got that flesh. She got that nasty woman's disease. No, this is I, honestly, you know, did you say her Tuesday nose? Tuesday nose. So I said that she don't like it on Monday. She changed it. Gonna change it on Tuesday. That bitch wish she, I bet I bet that bitch wish she had a time machine, take her ass back to the future and get her Monday nose, or maybe even her last Sunday nose, because her Tuesday nose needs to go in the garbage on Friday. And that's on Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Um, we got to move on to the hot seat. Hey, Kardashians. <laughs> oh, oh God. all right. Hey, if y'all been waiting all week for this show and you was like, I hope it's a good show, yes. you, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, last week, we introduced a new segment called the hot seat. And uh, Al and I asked you some provocative questions. And he was honest enough to answer all of them. Uh, I heard that it's, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 It up when you're in the hot seat. It's my Welcome turn to be in the, the hot, hot seat. seat. No, it's so, my turn. Welcome to the hot Welcome seat. Welcome, everybody. Claudia and Al and I are going to hit you with several questions that you hey, have to ask each one yada, in 20 yada, seconds. Yada, 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 and yada. move on. Are you ready? Yeah. Let me hold on. Can I get it? Let me take a sip. Get Go a drink, ahead. Baby, get a drink. <laughs> so I got the first question. Claudia, in your past, how have you been moving in these Hollywood streets that have so many people calling you a hoe or a pass around? Oh, damn. You know, I was called a hoe since I was 17 and a virgin by a guy that couldn't. And I went to Hollywood and the same things happened. I've been hit on by all your faves. And I said, no, the ones I have been with haven't said shit. Um, it's an easy insult to give to a woman like me that seems like I'm Teflon, but it does hurt my feelings sometimes, but it's not true. I'm too lazy to be a hoe. I say, if you're going to be a hoe, be the best hoe in Hollywood. I if would, I, though. I would. Don't have, don't have no damn regrets or reasons to explain to anybody. Okay, I got the next question. Okay, Claudia, you know, your boyfriend, KJ. Wait a minute, Claudia, your boyfriend, <laughs> KJ, would be perfect. See how hard it is a host? What? See how hard it is to host? What? Go read, you gotta read. Yeah, yeah be quiet. Read, and you gotta read. Okay, yeah, read. All right, your boyfriend KJ would be perfect if he did this one thing a little better. Go. Um, I want him to go for it more and to, um, uh, I wish he gambled more, but he's pretty perfect. He's pretty perfect. Good sex drive, no Viagra needed, good dude, supportive, honest, doesn't lie, doesn't cheat, can cook. I'm pretty lucky. Sorry, bitches. What did you mean by go for it more? Um, like, okay, say if we gambled, right? And we I won like two grand. He won two grand. He'd be like, oh, we're good. I'm happy. I'm like, nah. He plays his hundred. He's okay, safe. got it. All right, cool. Next question, please. Claudia, have you ever faked an orgasm with KJ? If so, why? Go. <laughs> yes. I was tired. I didn't want to go to sleep or my hair was freshly pressed and I don't want to sweat it all out. That shit's like $90 every single week. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but he's good. I don't have to. It's just if I want it to be faster. That's it. But he's bomb. So. Damn. All right, Claudia, I got the next one. Name a reality star that you wish you could make amends with and why. Go. <laughs> None of them bitches. If I had an argument with them, it's because I meant it and I was, it was on principle. And it was, I don't feel like I've done anything wrong to them. But you know what? I was cool with Portia before Housewives. And then it kind of went left when we had fun together. And I actually did like her hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, Claudia. Claudia, when did you last have sex and when do you plan to do it again? Go. <laughs> this car's not easy. I had sex two days ago and um, yeah, we had sex two days ago. Huh? Was it two days ago or was it last night? It was like within the last 48 hours. And 
I, I'm trying to trap KJ. I would I would like to trap him. <laughs> what does that mean? You're trying to have a kid? But then again, I'm a little nervous because I'm 48, so I want it to be all like. Ooh, bitch, that's geriatric. Like you gonna have to. Come <laughs> I'm 47. Great grandma. I, I wanted to cook. I wanted to cook all the way. You won't right, have to go, go to Dr. Jackie and go, go to the surrogacy center. All right, Claudia, without giving any names, tell us about a date or an ex-boyfriend you ghosted and why you quietly dumped him. Go. Uh, the first guy I ever kissed, I kissed him because I just wanted to know how to kiss, but not because I liked him. And then he told everybody we kissed and I denied it because he had a really, really long head. <laughs> <laughs> a long to this day, people think that a long head. His head was he was like off. Like, I like Jay Le <laughs> I kind of just wanted to be broken in with him, like to learn how to French. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Okay, Claudia, I got the next question. You damn still? How many questions I got? Listen, pay attention, Claudia. You were featured in several music videos in the '90s, in the early 2000s. Did you have sex with any of the artists? Wait a minute, I know the answer to this. Oh, wait, minute, sorry. Did you have sex with any of the artists whose videos you starred in? Go. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> it was the 90s. <laughs> and he's still cool with Ooh. me and my peoples to this Ooh. day. Ooh. It wasn't on set. Like, it was after, like, a while. After. Who was it? Um, damn, we're out of time. All right, before we have to go to commercial, Claudia, tell us about one scene from The Real Housewives of Atlanta that you went in that you wish had not aired. Go. Had not. You know what? Again, I'm gonna go back to the Porsche thing. When I had to go to her event where she was celebrating being on Dish Nation, they wanted me to confront her about that rumors about her. And I was like, I wouldn't do that in real life. Like, I wouldn't ruin someone's moment. And they're like, you have to do it. The head of the network even got on them. Like, someone called me, like, you have to do this. And I'm like, but this ain't me. I wouldn't really ruin someone's night like this. I, was, I wish I wish I would have, like, put my foot down. So Al, like, that was fun. Can we go back to the, who she had sex with, please? Al, leave that lady alone. We had leave enough lady alone, but She and never, she always alone. asked me about my sex life. <laughs> and Claudia, and, you were a good sport. Thank you, thank Al. You. Al, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll text you later. You know I love you. I love you too, Al. Anyways, that was a lot of fun. Let's get back to the show. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, and I'm going to hope my boyfriend don't want to break up me for that segment. We're going to be right back. Wow, with TGIF. Baby. Welcome back to TGIF. So listen, I'm in the back room doing the show. KJ in the other room. He usually be watching like, I don't know, Cuomo right now, Don Lemon, CNN. And during the break, I can hear it's a delay and I hear the buzzer going off. So he's watching right now. So um, people you know want to know who it is. They ask and they ask him. I want to know who it is. Hold on. Was it was it genuine? D'Angelo uh, or Master P? <laughs> My money is on genuine. I hope it was D'Angelo. That was Angie Stone, man. Angie Laverne Stone. I don't know though because been. remember, genuine used to be a stripper. I think G. I think it was a genuine. Genuine used to be a stripper. I think it was genuine. Genuine was, was not a stripper. Okay. That's a rumor. That's a good friend of mine. He wasn't a stripper. How what, good of a friend. He's a man of God, you guys. He's a man. It knows jeans, looking fly, pretty scrumptious. Tell me, is it any more room for <laughs> It was genuine. I've done over I've done over 20 videos as is you could y'all just know my video history. Huh? But have you done over 20 men? We're talking about no, who you did. No, no. Yeah, but we're talking about who you did. So this, this, this one is one of my know. video, just one of my video uh co-stars. That's it. Uh, anyways, we have to move on. We have a very disturbing story. A white Arkansas teacher is now on leave after making a five-year-old black kindergarten teacher clean a toilet with his bare hands that was filled with feces and tissue after he stopped it up. The family is calling for the teacher to be fired. Now the, children, the child's grandmother wrote in a letter, he is a young black male and this was done to degrade him, belittle him, and it will cause him to have anxiety. He keeps telling everybody what happened. What kind of punishment should that teacher face for no, what you did to that child? First of all, she wouldn't have to face no kind of punishment because had it been my damn child, the headline would have read, parent 
a parent faces first degree assault charge for whooping teacher ass down to the classroom for making my child play with some damn boo boo. That woman knows she damn wrong. And the thing that pissed me off the most about it is when she teaches kindergarten, but when the mama asked her why did she do it, she had the most kindergarten ass talking about, I don't know why I made him do it. Bitch, you know good and goddamn well why you why you made that child do a tone bound. She was trying to teach him not to stop up the toilet. He is a kindergartner, quiet as a scalp. Your trash ass should have been in there with him, helping him wipe his damn self. Number one, he's only what, 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 four, five and a half years old. When they go, five year olds can't even wipe their ass good. So, of course, he put the whole damn roll of toilet paper in the damn (laughs) toilet, okay? And then on top of that, that's what they got janitors for. You know what's messed up? You know how embarrassing it is? Like, your body, like when you're in a, when you're a teenager, even a young adult bodily functions are so embarrassing even to like 18 19 20 it's still embarrassing like think about how long it takes for you to like if you ever like i've never like have gas around my man like you know i mean imagine the the five-year-olds the feelings he must have with all of his classmates making fun of him now now it's in the internet now everyone knows about this story what a raggedy bitch this teacher was i hope they she gets all i hope she gets her ass whooped i really do Let me tell you what I enjoy the most about this story is the power of the media, okay? So remember, the grandmother was going into a meeting or I'm gonna say a beauty salon or a nail, getting her nails done or something. And her daughter called her and said, mama, you ain't gonna know, you ain't gonna believe what happened. The teacher did X, Y, Z. So you know what that grandmother did? Called the news. grandmother called the school. The school didn't call her back in time. You know what that grandmother did? The grandmother called the news station and reported the story. Now, the best thing about this is that the power of the media forced that school system to not sweep this under the rug, but to deal with the racism that has probably been around in that school system for years and not ignore it. So I'm going to say thumbs up to the grandmother, and in this case, thumbs up to social media and using the media for your benefit, because this to me is an exposed event that probably has been going on for a very long time in that school system. We have to take our last break. Very good thoughts, Al. We'll be right back with the last few minutes of TGIF. Welcome back to TGIF. This hour has gone by so fast. You know what? If, if you want more of this, I'm going to hop on my live after this. Al, if you want to join me, Dineve, I know you got to get to the bar, but I'm going to get on live. We can have a little bit more little talk. But real quick, 10 months after the tragic death of George Floyd, a judge in the case has reinstated third degree murder charges against police officer Derek Chauvin. Uh, He is also facing charges of second degree unintentional murder. Oh, that sounds like this. And second degree manslaughter. With that added charge, what are the chances he'll be found guilty and do any substantial time? The family did get awarded for 27 million. So I kind of feel like, oh, take this money because we're about to let this killer go. Right, so th- let me take this one real quick because you know I'm gonna know the facts. Okay, so this is, I need everybody who's a person of color to give me your ears and your eyes right now. I need all ears and eyes on deck. Remember, before this judge decided this, he was only charged with second degree unintentional murder, which is only a maximum of eight years and he can walk in three. And he was also charged not with second degree murder, as it's been reported. He was only charged with second degree manslaughter, which means in the heat of the moment, which only comes with a maximum service time of 10 years serving maybe three to five. The reason why this is very important is because if he adds that third degree murder, we're able to tack on an additional 25 years, okay? So without this dirt third degree murder, we almost had the chance of this guy who murdered George, who is quote, the Rosa Parks of the Black Lives Matter, would be out in the streets in eight, if not five years. This is significant that we put a third degree murder on it because now he can maximize his sentence of 25 years. I don't think anybody that looked like him and participated in something that he did should be able to walk in five to eight. He needs a minimum of 25 to 30. We have black males in prison today serving longer sentences for doing less. And it's not right. And I am glad that this judge turned over the third degree murder verdict. One minute left, Q. Anything to add to that? 
you know, the only thing that scares me is at the same time this news comes out, we also get the news that they've reached a settlement that they're willing to give the family 27 million settlement. And that scares me because we've seen in the past historically that you get this settlement in exchange for no justice. And That's especially right. when the family accepts the money, the city and the powers that be feel like, okay, all is good. So I hope in this time that they can walk away with a 27 million and a conviction. You know Absolutely. What? Fantastic okay. points by both of you. I think you're both right. And um, it's, it's really sad that the family who I'm sure needs the money um, has to kind of choose, not really choose, but it's, it's in lieu of, it's in exchange for, and I think that's awful. I think Derek Chauvin needs to get the maximum prison sentence the way he was so smug, squeezing the life out of George Floyd. And um, when he does get to jail, if it's two years or 10 years, I need uh, the jail justice to get in that ass, literally. We're gonna, um, that's it for our show, TJF. If you like what you see here, make sure you hit us on our YouTube comments and let us know how you feel. I'm gonna hop on my live at Claudia Jordan. And if you wanna come say hi, what's up? I'll be there. I wanna thank my fantastic co-host, the best co-host in the world, Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva for joining me tonight. Uh, make sure you uh, watch us on YouTube. And thank you for watching us on the YouTube. Stay tuned for Hollywood Unlocked with Jason Lee Uncensored. We'll see y'all next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.